So I've covered Resident Evil 2 in the second part of my Resident Evil retrospective. Now let's cover a spin-off game that takes place at the same time as Resident Evil 2, but isn't canon. Resident Evil Operation Raccoon Sitter. It's a third-person co-op team-based cover shooter. No, don't go anywhere yet. You play as Umbrella's security service. The six members all have their own set of skills for you to use, and they are trying to cover up Umbrella's involvement in the Raccoon City outbreak. And that initial idea sounds pretty interesting, doesn't it? Working behind the scenes, silently taking out witnesses, bribing people to silence, and getting out as if you were never there. Well, sadly, there's none of that, really. In fact, the first thing you do in the game is get into a big shootout with the UBCS. That's the unit Nikolai from Resident Evil 3 was a part of, by the way. And that immediately pissed me off. I know it's a spin-off, but I can shoot generic dudes in loads of games. I don't mind a bit of it, but you play Resident Evil for the monster, and whilst that is definitely in here, there's far too much boring cover base shooting. And to top that off, the shooting is absolute piss dribble. There's no weight or impact to any of your bullets. Enemies rarely react to being shot. You often miss, even though your reticle is aimed squarely at your enemy. And joy oh joy, every enemy in this game is a massive bullet sponge, even the zombies. So I ended up leaning on the melee system for a lot of the game because it's massively over powered, especially if you play as Vector, who can go invisible, walk up to those pesky soldiers and ram his knife through their temple. The encounters are horribly designed, enemies are meant to fight each other, so if you have you, spec up, zombies and hunters all in one fight, then it should be one interesting big brawl, but it ends up being every fucker against you most of the time. Zombies will stop attacking soldiers to come straight at you, and the large numbers just turns it into a clusterfuck. The sheer number of enemies on screen tanks the frame rate, causing some pretty annoying deaths. But I will say, in some of the better designed encounters where the enemy numbers are on a nice level, you can chain together your moveset to look pretty badass, going from melee attacks to your quick draw mode where you hold L2 to pull out your pistol and use the right stick to pop shots off, then going back to your shotgun and blowing some heads off. It can be pretty satisfying. Sadly though, those moments are few. The dodge doesn't help matters either. You have to hold in the left stick, choose a direction, then press X to dodge. And by the time you've done that, the enemy has already jumped on you, knocked you down, then as you get back up, they smack you down again. It just feels like they made this game to be as annoying as possible. Bosses take the absolute piss with how much damage they can soak up, as well as spawning 10 million zombies or soldiers as well. None of the encounters feel that fair, really. The soldiers are pinpoint accurate, and you also have the stupid stupid infection system. If a zombie bites you, you get infected. Well, apparently anyway. Sometimes I got bit, then never got infected. Other times a zombie brushed past me, and I did. So it's a bit schizophrenic. I did like when you or a squad mate turns into a zombie, you have to put them down, which I thought was a neat little touch. You can wipe off the infection by using antiviral spray, but it's pretty hard to find at points. Speaking of the squad, they are useless. Constantly getting in your way, walking into hazards, and whilst they kill one or two zombies, they do barely any damage. You can play online to alleviate this, but somehow, I don't think people are playing this still. But at least when they do turn into a zombie, you can slam the head into a car door, but they aren't gone for the rest of the mission. You can just revive them again, so what's the point? If you die, though, it's game over straight away, because the AI just can't be asked to revive you or your other squad mates. It's not like the story's any good either. The the characters are all dickheads who seem to get creepily excited by the prospect of silencing innocent people who have been fucked over by a completely immoral company who the team work for. I didn't even see any one of them use an emotion other than, ooh, look at me, I'm well odd. All the 12 year olds playing this will think I'm well cool. There was one bit where a character shows emotion and puts her arm on another one to console them and he told her to fuck off and I thought that was pretty funny. Are you gonna make it? <sighs> Get off me. 
Nothing really happens plot-wise. Everything you do is an excuse to just interact with characters from Resident Evil 2 and 3. Nikolai for the first few missions of the game, who just gets up and fucks off after a while. Then you reprogram Nemesis in an absolutely terrible fight. Then you chase Leon for a bit. The Nikolai bit is the most puzzling. You tail him for a few missions with Umbrella yelling in your ear to take him out. And then you get into a big boss fight with him, which ends with Umbrella telling you, no, we changed our mind now he's not a priority you fucking what mate the big thing that got everyone excited was that you could rewrite resident evil history but you don't really like i said nikolai just fucks off and goes back to what he was doing and the same goes with nemesis it only changes at the end where you get to choose whether you kill leon or not obviously i executed him because with a haircut like that he deserves everything he gets a weird thing happens at this ending though you choose whether you want to help or kill leon then depending on who picks what, if you're online, you end up doing a little death match. In single player, it's just 2v2 with one side having Leon as well. And Christ, I thought the enemies in this game took the piss with their bullet sponginess, but nothing compares to Leon. After around 30 grenade launcher rounds, a load of machine gun rounds, and a load of sniper headshots, he finally died. And then I got to shoot Claire in the face right in front of little Shera. Thankfully, there is something good in this game. Though if you go by the rules of the game, my character would have to empty her whole gun into Claire's face. In all seriousness though, buried in here is a good idea. It's just the game is a homogenized load of shite, but at least at barely five hours long, I didn't have to suffer too much.